Hello everybody, in this video we're going to learn how to make a door and window schedule with a door and window legend. So let's get into it. I'm going to go over to my project browser and I'm going to go to schedules over here on the left and I would right click and say new schedule and quantities. When you click on that a menu pops up and you can go and select a door schedule or you could go down and select a window schedule. We have to create them one at a time. So here we have door schedule. And I'm just going to say OK. And this would go and give me a bunch of options to throw into my fields. So very typical, you would throw in your door count, you would throw in your family uh, and type, you would throw in your uh, height, you would throw in your width, and, and so forth. I'm going to cancel out of this one so I can show you all of the settings I have on my other one now. So if I go to my actual door schedule that I've made ahead of time and I double click and get into it and then click on edit, you can see all of the fields that I threw in uh, to the right. You don't have to have all of these. I would say order, mark, count, family and type, rough width, rough height, or just width and height would be good to have. From there, I'm not doing any kind of filtering, so that means I'm showing everything. Then I'm sorting by the order, mark, and then family and type. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanted my door DC to come first, so I have order on here, and this is a little secret that you can do that not a lot of people will notice because you can hide the order then, and it looks like it's being sorted by mark. For formatting, under order, I have it as a hidden field. That's why you don't see it on my schedule. If I uncheck hidden field and say OK, you'll see that the order pops up. And this allows you to reorder anything on your schedules. And so in my case, if I go to my formatting under order, if I want that to be hidden then, I can say OK. The other settings I have, past formatting, all these are by default, just left normal. And then appearance, I can change even the text to be a particular style to maybe match everything else in my project. But here I have everything else by default as well. So now that I have the door schedule out of the way, the window schedule is done the same way. But here's the settings I have in my window schedule. If I go to edit, I have these fields. The ones that you might include if you want a very basic one would be mark, count, family and type, rough height, rough width. Sill height would be important so we know where to put those windows when we construct. And then I like thermal resistance on there as well. So we know how um, uh, protective against the heat transfer these windows are. And then under filter, once again, I have nothing being filtered. Sorting and grouping, I'm sorting by mark and then family and type. Formatting, everything's left by default. And then under appearance, everything's by default and say OK. I would literally drag these into the sheet that I want. So under my door and window schedule, I have my schedules here. I just literally drag those in. I dropped in my door schedule right there. And then I took this text for window schedule and I dropped that into my sheet right there. Then I was ready to make my actual legends for my door and my windows. You'll see in my floor plan, I had already overridden all of these tags to be exactly the tag I want. So if I double click in here to get into my project and I go to this door tag, I left click on it twice very slowly to get into editing it and I can change that door tag to be whatever I want. You'll also see that under the doors properties, I could go and change the mark right here. I can also go to edit type on the door and I can tell us, I can tell the uh, schedule what kind of manufacturer is going to populate that schedule. I can also re-change the type mark right here as well to be D3 and say OK. And then this gives my door all the properties it needs to then go and fill out that schedule correctly. Now I'm going to use the same tag that I have on the floor plan to then coordinate with the legend. So to make a door legend, what I have to do is create a line to represent the ground. And I'm going to do that with a detail line. I'm going to go in and place these doors. But there's a special way we do this. Since this is just a paper, kind of infinitely sized paper that I then just drag into my door and window schedule on my sheet. So in order to make that, I go up to the View tab. And then I click on Legends. And then I go down to Legend here. And this creates that infinite sheet. 
I like to keep my scale of my door and my window the same. I think it reads clear. And so I like to do a quarter inch equals a foot because that's a typical scale we'd see on a plan view and then say OK. Now I have this blank sheet of paper made. Then I go to the annotate tab. Everything I'm doing is just 2D lines and it's not part of my 3D model. So that's why the annotate tab is where we need to be. You'll see everything else is grayed out. I can't drag in doors or windows here. If I go to the annotate tab, I can draw a detail line and that represents the ground. The same process would apply for a window as it would a door. Now with this line against the ground, I'm going to go and load in a component. If I drop down, I see I have one extra special component here called Legend Component. I would click on that. All of the items that I have for bringing in here is different than what we typically have. Here you'll see that I brought in a window, even though I'm supposed to be doing, let's say, a door schedule. Um, I would change that by scrolling up. Now I would have to find my doors. So here's my doors. So let's say I brought in this exterior door. It's going to go and it's going to want to place it. So I'm going to just put it in right now, just like this, floating off the ground. I'm going to hit Escape. Now clicking on that door, I can use the Align tool and click on my ground and then click on the bottom edge of the door. Now it's placed on the ground. And then I can go and I can drag this line out to be much further. The actual scale, if we want to change it, we can change it right here. And that will change how large it shows on our page. I want to also go and annotate this. So I can do a, an aligned dimension from the left to the right to show how truly big this door is with its uh, casing around it. And I can also go and I can tag out the actual material qualities on this. So I can go up to the material tag and this is based on properties that exist on the door itself. And I should go and adjust this to make this look a little bit better. But you, here you can see that all of these texts, it was auto-populated by the type of door and the type of materials that were already in the family for that door. And here I can see that there's like a composite frame here as well, same as the door itself. So you can see that these two match. All right, so now that I have that information, if I was doing a window, which I would do on a separate legend, if I were doing a window, I would be dragging things the same way. I'd be doing a legend component. I would drop this down to a window. And to save time, I'm just doing it all right now. But here you can see that I have, let's say, like a Marvin window that I'm putting in. Then I can actually dimension to its sill height. And then I would dimension its height and its width. So that's why I like having that ground line. This way I can show sill heights as well on the legend. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to show it that way too. So this one's a rather large window, placing it in. And I would only be placing in items that are actually on my schedule. So sometimes it's nice to take a screenshot of your schedule and have it off to the side or print it out. That way when you go to make this legend, you can make sure that you're including just the things that you have in your project. So if I want to go and dimension this out, I'll go to Align Dimension, and I would click here, and I would click to where the sill is on this window, dimension that out, and then I would go and make another dimension right here as well. And then I would go and get the width of my window, called out right here. It's a rather large window. So going through, there's a lot of different options you have for creating your legends. Once you have that legend created, you can go down to your sheet that you want to drag that legend in. And here, um, let's see, under my legends, the one I just made was legend one. So for example, I would just go and drag that in, and I would go click and place that on my actual drawing. In my case, I don't want this one that I did on the demo to be in here. So I'm just going to click and delete that out. But here you can see that I've done a door and a window one. I only have two types of windows in my project, and I have nine plus one more, 10 types of doors in my project. And then in a later video, I show how to do detail components and how to bring those in. So I've already made that video, so if you want to go and check it out, you can check out how to bring in some specs as detail items and drag those in into your schedule as well. Now I have a sheet that's pretty all-encompassing. I've got my schedule of information, I have my legend, including dimensions and some material callouts for the windows. 
And then here I have some details for the header, sill, and jams on those windows. Don't forget to save and subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you all next time.